Since January 2013, I've walked 19,000 steps a day. To be clear, that's an average of 19,000 steps a day. For almost three years, I've hosted a daily 10-minute podcast called Walking is Fitness. I'm not a doctor. It's important for you to know that. I'm not a licensed personal trainer, but I am a guy who knows some stuff about walking. And in this video, I want to talk about five things that people get wrong about walking. And I think for some of them, we could even add the qualifier, most people, that most people get wrong about walking. And we'll start with number one, that walking isn't exercise. And I understand why people feel that way. They're used to casual walking, walking through the store at a very slow pace, casually taking a walk through the woods. I'm walking at a pretty slow pace right now, walking from one room to the next. And we've been doing it since we were one year, one year old. So it doesn't feel like exercise. And the reality is that kind of walking, the walking that I'm doing right now, really is an exercise. But the experts say that if we add some intensity to our pace, we are consistent with our commitment to walking, it most certainly rises to the level of exercise. So not all walking is exercise, but to say that no walking is exercise, well, that's wrong. And that's one of those things that people get wrong. And I would even say most people. All right, number two, that it doesn't really matter. Walking doesn't have any kind of an impact. I'll even give you that it's exercise, but seriously, Seriously, what kind of impact does walking have? Because again, when we think of exercise, we think of strenuous, hard people making faces and grunting and sweating profusely, and they don't look like they're having fun. And when people are out walking, sometimes it looks like we're having fun. I'm certainly enjoying this walk right now. And so even if they ascend to, all right, that's exercise, but seriously, what does it really matter? it's not going to have any kind of an impact. Well, again, back to the research. There's been research done that if you walk consistently for exercise, you could lower the possibility of an early death by, are you ready for this? 50%. <laughs> I mean, that's an impact. But, you know, the reality is we don't, we don't die in a vacuum. I guess unless you're in space, that's a possibility, but I digress. We die from causes. And so, again, research-based, that when we are walking consistently for exercise, we're lowering the risk of getting all kinds of bad diseases, bad health outcomes, things like heart disease, certain types of cancer, type 2 diabetes, even dementia. So walking clearly has an impact when you are walking for exercise. And I should also add real quick that even walking like I'm doing now, slow walking that might not rise to the level of exercise, it's still beneficial. Movement is better than sitting. So even movement that is slow paced, that is casual, that may not be consistent, it still has benefits. But in terms of having this impact on lowering the risk of an early death and lowering the risk of heart disease, certain types of cancer, type 2 diabetes, dementia. Walking as exercise certainly does have an impact. And I think that's one of those things that a lot of people, maybe even most people, get wrong about walking. Eh, what does, difference does it make? What kind of an impact is that going to have? All right, the third thing that people get wrong about walking is that you need 10,000 steps a day. And again, this is totally understandable. Those are the headlines we see when people are talking about walking and walking for fitness, and walking for exercise. What's their goal? 10,000 steps. So we just get it in our mind that we need 10,000 steps a day to have that kind of an impact that you're talking about, you know, lowering the risk of an early death, lowering the risk of certain bad health outcomes, need at least 10,000 steps, right? Well, again, wrong. <laughs> there was a landmark study within the last 10 years 
that showed you can have a significant impact on your long-term health with far fewer than 10,000 steps a day. In fact, it was 7,500 steps a day. That lowering your risk of an early death by 50%, that's not 10,000 steps a day, that's around 7,500 steps a day. So you don't need 10,000 steps a day. That's not to say that 10,000 steps a day is bad or that it has no benefits, but that's not the starting place. In fact, I even did a video, one of the first videos I did, was why 10,000 steps is a terrible goal. Because a lot of folks who say, all right, I'm gonna start using walking as a fitness activity, as exercise, and they dive into the deep end, and they aim for 10,000 steps a day, and maybe you can get that for the first few days, but that's really hard to sustain at the very beginning. My recommendation is you work up to that. And maybe you never reach that point. The idea here is walking consistently with some intensity. So that's one of the things that people get wrong about walking, that you need 10,000 steps. No, you don't. All right, number four, again, you read the headlines and there are a lot of articles. There's a lot in social media about the impact of walking. And you would almost get the impression that walking's all you need. You go to the doctor and the doctor suggests, you know, you need to move more. You should walk. You should take walks every day. And you kind of put all that together and you start thinking, well, walking, okay, it's exercise. It has an impact. I don't need 10,000 steps. Walking's all I need. I guess really the, the follow-up question is, all you need for, for what? That research, lowering the risk of an early death, lowering the risk of certain bad health outcomes, that was based on walking alone. There wasn't fine print, you know, walk this many steps and then a little asterisk and you look down at the bottom and you also need a lifetime membership at a gym where you're working out 30 minutes every day. You know, it doesn't, doesn't say that. Those studies, that research was based on walking. But I'm looking long-term, and I know that many others are looking at exercise as a component to aging well. I want to age well. I want to maintain mobility. I want to maintain brain power. I want to maintain my health as long as possible. And well, the experts will say walking is, is wonderful exercise, powerful. You also need strength training. Lifting weights, in fact, I've heard some experts say that the strength training as you get older is even more important than the cardio. You need balance, balance exercises, flexibility. Of course, nutrition also plays a key role in that. And how much sleep we get and how we manage stress, all of that factors in if you want to have a well-balanced, healthy life and you want to age well. Walking is powerful, but is it all you need? I guess it really depends on what are you talking about? All you need for what? And I think some people get that wrong, thinking that walking's all you need. Don't need to do anything else. Don't need to pay attention to what I'm eating. Don't need to pay attention to any kind of other exercises or fitness activities. All right, and then number five, and I think most people get this one wrong. And this one might surprise you just a little bit. They think that walking is easy. <laughs> and you might be reacting to that with a, seriously, are you telling me that what you're doing right now is hard? Actually, what's really hard about what I'm doing right now is looking into the lens of the camera and not the screen to see if I'm making any weird, funny faces. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest thing that I'm doing right now. It's not the physical act of walking. Although I do recognize that for some people, there's chronic pain. There are other conditions that make the physical act of walking difficult. But for most of us who can walk without much pain, it's not the physical act of walking that's a challenge, that's hard. It's making the commitment and sticking with it, being consistent. That's really, really hard. 
Building a fitness habit is really, really hard. Staying with it is really, really hard. And so what happens? Folks say, I'm in, sign me up. I'm gonna start walking for fitness. And they head out, maybe even have a good time. And it's like, this is great, this is easy. And then a week later, well, life intervenes. Life is hard, life is busy. And they find that sticking with that commitment is actually a challenge. If that's you, I wanna invite you to listen to my daily podcast, Walking is Fitness. There's a new episode every day. It's designed to help you make the commitment and stick with it. And by the way, I'm not sitting in some comfortable studio and a nice leather chair with big headphones, leaning into the microphone going, it's time for your daily walk. You should be walking now. Let's pick up the pace. <laughs> I'm actually out walking as I record each episode. So we're walking together. Again, the name of the podcast, Walking is Fitness. And thank you for watching this video.